my life. It's in my DNA. G'day and welcome to part two of my sword fishing special. Now, first up, you will notice that Cooper's gone. He's had to go back to school. I tell you what, this coronavirus and having these kids home at school, he's got to work during his lunch break now. But anyway, now in part one, I covered off on the early days, you know, catching that first one with pass at night. Then of course, when we did it with Strike Zone and filming that first one out of Sydney. And of course, getting my first one with Coops. And that's the great thing. I suppose this whole thing of the coronavirus and everything is doing it with your family and being able to catch that sortie during the day with Coops has been unreal, except it then set him off because now all he wants to do is catch swordfish. And going through it and showing him losing that big one, well, it's a very... I was not expecting this. Just said you want to be First up, it's all about sounding. Now, this video, we shot just quickly one day we're out sounding and using Furuno and stuff because the great thing with Furuno is it's commercial quality gear that's going down to recreational. A lot of the other stuff is actually trying to boost themselves up. And one thing that's really important, everyone always talks about having this perfectly clean screen. I'll tell you right now that if you're really serious about your fishing, if you've got a clean screen, you're missing out because it's not showing you enough. You're missing out on information. The more information on that screen, the more you can interpret or the better the picture. Now, if there's one question I get asked a lot when it comes to sword fishing, it's how to set your sounder up. Okay, with my 295, my Ferrino, I've got a two kilowatt, a variable frequency. So it's 6110, so I can change the frequency. So I normally set it around 60 to 80, depending on you know the water clarity. And it, the important thing is chop and change it. Second thing we do is we go to menu, we go to TX, RX, and you go down to target echo. And if we press enter on that, you've got normal surface squid deep sea. We use deep sea because that'll give you the best picture down here. The second thing we do that's really important is to go come back out, get us both, is to go and you set up so you want to see the bottom. So what we've got there, you can see it 350 fathoms. I've got mine set in fathoms. I don't want to see the whole lot. So I go into shift, what we do is you go range. And when you do it properly, you dial it up and down. So I'm sitting in 110 fathoms, but my shift has got that at 110 fathoms. So that's the whole lot. And what I can do is I can move up and down the screen just by pushing the shift up and down, which means my 110 fathoms is up and down. So it's 200 meters. So it can actually, if you want to see the bottom even better, so we go to menu, we go down to systems, we go to range, we go to 110 fathoms, and we're going to, let's bring it up to 80 fathoms, so it's about 150 meters we're going to view. So we're going to go to there, enter, and then it's escape, 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 clear that. Then we go to range, and we dial, turn it, there we go, to 90, we're going to go to 80. Radio. And now, you can see instantly there, so enter on that. We're not getting the bottom, so we press the shift down. And you can see it rising up through the screen there. Go to 270, and you should see the bottom. There you go, 270, it's, you can just start to see the bottom there. So this is the important part. You use your shift, you pick the depth you want to view, which in this case is uh, 80 fathoms, and then you just shift up and down so you can see it. And that way, you get a really good picture at the bottom and you find the all-important bait so you can catch a swordfish. You know the funny part with that video? Is that you look at it, and I think Coops was filming it a little bugger. He's put the Apple sticker on my shirt and I had no idea and let me film the whole thing with it. Professional. Now, this is the big part. The hookup. Fishing is my life. How to hook up is still up in the air. No one really knows yet because it's still learning. The guys in the US definitely seem to prefer J hooks. Some of the guys here have done really well on circles. Others have done really well on J's and I've lost them on both. And this is a classic example because what's happening is 600 meters away. Yep. Eat the fucking bro! 
Right. You fucking stupid creature. Seven minutes we finally get the hook up. Now this is on a circle hook and really highlights that I didn't want to put the pressure on or get the over it was the angle of this top to put the pressure on because we want them to eat that bait. What on earth is that fish doing for seven minutes down there? It's a dead bait. It's not swimming away. You just put it in your mouth and just eat it. So frustrating. Feeling weight on there? I'm sure there's more weight there this time. That's more weight than last time. Yep. Fucking oath there's weight. Yep, throw me off it. Oh, You've man. got weight? Yes, I've got weight. Okay. You're lifting well there. Okay. You're lifting well. <laughs> oh, I was till you moved. Yobri is just trying to fight a fish right now. Got a sword on, he's on top. And I am excited. Here we go, here we go. And you know the worst part? After seven minutes we hook up, we then fight it for two hours, it comes up, it jumps, so it is a swordfish, so it's 100 percent a sword. And then what happens? The hooks pull. What is the right hook? I still don't know. The only way is to put more time in and just keep trying to get a feel for what's going on. Circle hook could definitely be the way in the future, but at the moment we just haven't got it quite right. Fishing is my life. First step is getting your baits down. Now, Rich is a gun at this stuff. There's no secret technique other than taking the time and setting the gear to a structure and carefully in a sequence. So what I mean by that is you don't just throw it all over and hope for the best. Firstly, you rig your baits right. Secondly, you set it up so that when the system's going down, when it's dropping down to the bottom, it's all in line. If bits can twist up and spin, they will. So it's about refining your technique and making it as robust as possible to run down 600 metres. Now we run a couple of different rigs. Some guys snap them off down deep and then let it drift up, which works well when there's no current. Other guys like to sit there with the weight and hold it down near the bottom. They both work. Different times of year, it's different preferences, I think, play a role. I think it's still early days yet for what one works best. The key is, You've got to keep watching that rod tip. Any sign, any sign that there's something going on down there. Because remember, at 600 metres or 500 metres, whatever you're fishing, that's a lot of string to have in the water and anything going on down the bottom in there is absorbed a lot by the time it gets to the top. So the slightest little whiting tip could mean a 500 pound sword. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 Oh, 
just knocked that weight off, eh? Yeah, yeah. Come on, baby. So distinct every time, but that's a proper. Yeah, baby. Told me to throw it out. Now, initially, I'll just keep winding the rod hole to make sure the weight, and we want it so that you're fully loaded up so the hooks have actually sunk home, because a lot of the time, you're winding belly, so you're not actually hooking the fish. You don't even know yet. Once you get it up, you put all, harness it all up, you put everything on, you've got it in the black magic ready to go. It's really important that everything's comfortable. It's, do you know what? Game fishing is all those hours of boredom, minutes of mayhem, but in those hours, you prep everything, you make sure the harness fits, you make sure everything's comfortable, because you don't want to be doing it while the fight's going on. Now, the beauty with the black magic is it just sits straight on your bum, you've got two straps, pull them in tight, you're done. And it made it really easy just to get straight into it, even with the help of Good luck, Al. Still up, mate. Yeah, just start nudging away from the dirt. Get under this rod, Al. Get under this rod, Al. That angle good? You know the best part about daylight sword fishing? I already want to take my top off. And that's not for the girls. Hey Al, can you please do me a favour buddy? Yeah, um, don't take your top off. Really? <laughs> it won't be a very pretty sight. Take it easy, Herbs. As, as you are, you've got little tinkers. Neutral and neutral. Yeah, neutral. I mean, you got it. You know he's a pensioner, yeah? He didn't get all this beef, you know, working swordfish after swordfish, mate. He might have done a TV channel on swordfish, watched a lot of that. Hey, there's beautiful curves here. <laughs> oh, fat. I'm, I'm really glad. Mate, I'm going very steady. Then you shall do me a favour, Al, now that we're back on the favours again. Get him the jump. Oh, yeah. Angle's good. I've had, had a head shake there before. Definitely a sword, I'm almost certain of it. Go the Chalica. The bite was so sword, wasn't it? Oh, it was sword all the way, yeah? He kept hitting it. Head shake. Angle's coming up. Now, the big thing with swords, even though you're hooking them way down deep, they come straight to the surface. And on a day like this, all we wanted to do was to get a jump, get that fish to jump. Richie's ready for it. No, never did. Instead, it comes straight up. Yeah, that's it, that's it. So now, that's it. So this is the sword. And this is the problem. Get with them. You can get them right up to the boat. Get me off in a bit, guys. You're right where you are, Al. You sit there. I got it. Here's the... Get them up to the boat, you know. I've got some of the sides of the boat in that pool. 
did come down range and it's literally come straight to the boat. We've unclipped all the lights and that was in the first 20 minutes and then it was four hours later that we got the One of the things I really love about this is that you're doing it with your mates and your family. Like having coops there as part of this for this massive fish is just absolutely unreal. It's one of those experiences you can't explain. You know, I was there for his first deer, I was there for his first, you know, first pig on the bow, first marlin, first tuna, all these sort of things. That's it. And then at 50 minutes, you've got this fish up. To do it with all your friends, this is what it's all about. Coming around, just dead, trying to get me off it a bit there, that's what makes it rich. Sitting under anchors there. This thing catching one of these fish. There's so much. Hey, coot. Watch the anchor. Can't see nothing when you see it. No. Get a load on him there, Al. Yeah, I'm only on strike, but we've got some. Yeah, yeah, alright, you're alright. You're not doing enough for us to worry about going in hard at the moment. I'm losing a good line here now. Oh, I just felt something rub then. Something moved. You know, just around oh, yeah. him or something, something definitely moved. Solid weight on him, you know. We've got how many pounds am I running on here? It'd be about 14 kilo, 12, 14 kilo now. This is the critical part. As it's coming up, you're right up there. Richie's run in, he's ripped the light off, it's all ready to go, you know, popped off because we run longer leaders for this, so wind on leaders, so that you can put your lights further up. So if you're only running like a, a 15 foot leader or a 20 foot leader, all your lights are running down close, you don't want them on your main light. So we actually run 50, you know, 60 foot, 120 pound, 130 pound, you know, so it's still legal if you want it to be, as a leader, just so you can run your gear further up. And this is the priority because it's these final stages as you're getting close. You don't want to put too much pressure on because you can pull hooks. And you don't know. It's not like a marlin where you're fighting it. You can see where the hook is while you're fighting it. Okay, this is what we need to do. With a stored, it's down deep. So it's only just coming up. So you don't get to see where the hooks are. But I tell you what, when this one came up, as he rises up, we realised he was well and truly hooked down deep. And it was a monster. It's these critical moments that play such a big role. It's just, oh, it's, it's such an adrenaline rush to have such a big fish. Yeah, the fish is up close. Then he's rolled over and they're so big and so hard to control it's a real mission to be able to do it and then you know it rolls up and stops good sword Woo! Woo! Get, the fix. get the fix get the fix come on come on guys get the fix come on other side you have another side of me <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Sticky, sticky. go back ah! hang on He's a good fish. Woohoo! Yes! That's a fish! Woohoo! Hang on, Brian. Get the other side. Get him up again, boy. Get to it, Reg. Get it to it. Got him, got him, got him! Yes! Yes! That's a good fish, man! Look that's at a that! Good fish. One more, more, give me more of that. Yes! Oh, oh that's man. a good sword! Where you got him? Where you got him, boys? Yeah, yeah baby! Oh, Praise, the Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! It's such an adrenaline rush to have such a big fish. Yeah, the fish is up close, then he's rolled over, and they're so big and so hard to control. It's a real mission be able to do it and then you know it rolls up and stops and you've got to get gas in and secure it that moment is an absolute elation but at the same moment or same time i feel that 
that sadness that, you know, I've killed such an awesome fish. But you know the important thing? It's gonna feed the whole family. Mind you, at this stage, all I'm thinking about is securing it because this is the biggest swordfish I've ever caught. That's a fish! <laughs> So securing it's one thing, getting it on board, but well, this is proving to be a whole new issue, you know? It's a big fish, and it doesn't even fit through the side door, so like, it's like, oh, someone's like, holy moly, what are we going to do here? It ended up taking us longer to get the fish on board than it did to land, to fight it. Like, how on earth did this, like, what the... Oh, mind you, these are problems I like to have. So we started trying to get it through the side door. We can't get it through because it's too wide. It doesn't actually fit in the side door. Holy shit. Oh, we haven't had a problem getting one through the side door yet. Great, but this is a this is a full monster. This is a proper one. This is a serious monster. And we've scrolled coops, I'll give you a hand there. Alright. So we want the other side here, so you can grab that top pin and we'll roll it. So then we had to drag it round the back and with the pulley system get it up between the, the outboards and get it in through there and finally we got it on. Yeah, I'm just going to have to go around that fin and slide him back like that. Hey, fuck it's a good fish, mate. Leave it there. But you know what? It's that elation that you've caught this fish. For me, catching a big swordfish is something I've dreamed about all my life. And now, to have caught a couple of big ones and let a couple go over the years as well, it's just been absolutely monumental and it's an experience that's only made better by doing it with your family. You know the next step? We're racing home because we've got to cut this fish up. It's, it's a respect to the fish as well that you've got all this amazing, it's, it's the best eating fish on earth. So we've got to get back and start chopping it up. So you reckon the hard part was catching it? The hard part's about to start. Catching one thing. I spent days and days cutting up that swordfish. All my coolers, all my yetis were full. Chopping up more and more swordfish. You know the best part? You know the best part? Cooper's gone now, so I can talk about this, is that we were cooking up grilled swordfish is absolutely beautiful. He kept taking it to school. So I'd cook up a bit and he'd take a bunch to school next day for lunch. He kept taking more and more to school. And I thought, oh, this is weird. Anyway, I hit him up for it one day. He's trading it at school. So he's selling it for soft drink and lollies. Selling my swordfish at school. Now that's an entrepreneur, but I don't know if it's the right thing. So there you go. This is what swordfishing is all about. It's a whole new fishery here. There's some big ones. George Lorenz has caught a monster that was just shy of a thousand pounds. So there's some absolute monster fish there. And it's all here in Australia. Oh, and New Zealand as well. They've got some bloody big fish there as well.